Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. This week I want to address a question that's been floating around, well really, ever since the R35 GTR came out. And that is, is the R35 GTR actually a Skyline? Now usually this question gets brought up either online or at a car show when you're hanging out with car people and someone pulls up in an R35 and they start talking about how you know they can do the quarter mile in about 10 seconds with simple bolt-ons in the 85 and they can use launch control to go zero to 60 in less than three seconds. Inevitably, you always get that one person who pops up with, well, you know, it's not really a Skyline, right? It's, it's just a GTR. Well, today I wanna to take a look at the history of Skylines, take a look at the R35 and try and answer that question, is the R35 GTR really a Skyline? I wanna start this discussion with, well, the one place where most of the arguments end up going, and that's with the engine. And there it is, the heart of the R35 GTR. This is the VR38DETT engine, and this seems to be the biggest arguing point for people who say this car is not a Skyline. Those people typically say like, well, it didn't come with an RB26, therefore it's not a Skyline. And of course, those people are referring to the R32 to the R34 GTRs, and they did. Those cars came with an RB26DETT engine. However, the Skyline, line wasn't just a GTR. There were other additions such as the GTT and a few others. To kind of take you through some of the engine options that were available for the Skylines, you have the 2.7 liter RB26 DETT. You have the 2.6 liter, which is the famous one, RB26 DETT. There's also a two liter RB20, and there's even a four cylinder 1.8 liter CA18. So even the Skylines weren't married to just the RB26 engine. And of course, those are just the R32 to the R34s. If you take a step back to even the Hakasukas, those came with an inline six, but those were naturally aspirated and they were carbureted. If you go back even farther to when Skyline was part of a company called Prince, which Nissan bought out later and they appropriated the Skyline car line and turned it into what it is today. But back then, those were just a commuter car that came with a four cylinder and some of them even came with diesel engines. So the argument that because the R35 doesn't come with an RB26 and it's not a Skyline is not a valid argument. And moving on from the engine, the next thing a lot of people think of when they think of the Skyline is that it's all wheel drive. However, that's not exactly 100% accurate. The R32 to R34 Nissan Skyline GTRs were all wheel drive, but you gotta remember the rest of the line was actually a rear wheel drive platform. However, the R35 GTR does continue in the tradition of being an all wheel drive when you compare it to the R32 to the R34 GTR. On top of that, what most people don't realize is those cars actually aren't all time all wheel drive. The R32 to R34 Skyline GTRs came with what was called an Atezza system, which that car, like the rest of the Skylines, is a rear wheel drive platform, but the Atezza system can transfer up to 50% of the power from the rear wheels to the front wheels if it fills slippage. To continue on that tradition, the R35 GTR also has a system like that. It's actually a rear wheel drive car, but if the computer senses slippage in the rear tires, it can transfer up to 50% of the power to the front wheels. So if you wanna look at whether or not something is a Skyline based on just the GTR trim package and require that it has the all wheel drive, the R35 follows that tradition. However, the all wheel drive system isn't the only trick that the R32 to R34 GTRs have up their sleeve. They also came with a form of all wheel steering called Hikus. And this was a very advanced steering system for the time. The way the Hikus system works is based on computer calculations, speed of the car, and even force feedback through the steering wheel, the car could turn the rear tires five degrees either way. And on top of that, it was also adaptive. At low speeds, the wheels would turn opposite the direction you were steering. And what this would do is help you corner harder. At higher speeds, the Hikus system would actually turn the rear wheels the same direction as the front wheels. And what this would do would allow you to change lanes faster or adjust your position on the track in a more nimble way. And that's something the R35 doesn't have, which goes to suggest that maybe the R35 really isn't a Skyline. However, to counteract that point, 
The Skyline GTR wasn't the only car that came with that Hikus system. Some of the 300 ZXs also came with that all-wheel steering mechanism, which means that it wasn't unique to just the Skyline. However, when you take a look at the fact that it was on all 34 to 32 Skyline GTRs, the fact that the GTR doesn't have it, I think does kind of suggest that maybe it's not exactly following the Skyline lineage. Moving beyond just the performance capabilities of these cars, we should probably take a look at the aesthetics. When you take a look at the Skylines from the 1957 entry level to all the way R34, they were not big cars. In fact, they were the true definition of a sports car compact. The R35, though, is a complete deviation from that philosophy. It is big and it is heavy, which seems to suggest that this is not a Skyline. However, Nissan, when they decided to greenlight the R35 GTR, they only had two mandates. One is that it had to be fast enough to beat a 911 Turbo around the Nuremberg ring, and two is that it had to have the famous Nissan Skyline round taillights, which seems to suggest that even Nissan considers the R35 a Skyline. Moving beyond just the exterior looks of the cars, when you take a look at the interior, the R35 would also seem to be a descendant of the Skyline lineage. When you take a look at the R32 to the R34, the dash was very kind of boxy and modular in how it was laid out. This was very different from other cars of that era, such as the Supra and the RX-7, which had a very kind of molded wrap around you type dash that blended into all the different elements. The skylines were very, like I said, separated and modular. And the R35 seems to be continuing that philosophy where everything's kind of separate and on its own and very boxy. The other thing that would seem to suggest that the R35 is part of the Skyline lineage is this right here, the AV unit, which displays all sorts of information on what's going on with your car. Now, when you take a look at the R32, it didn't have a computer screen to show you that, but it did have some gauges right there on the dash to show you like your boost and your torque split and your electric. This, of course, carried into the R33. And then finally, it was the R34 that decided to put a computer screen right there on the dash to give the driver more information, which would seem to be an evolution of giving the driver information. And this would be a direct result of that line. The other thing that seems to suggest that this might be part of the Skyline lineage is the seats. For those of you that have seen my previous videos, you know that the, my favorite seats of any car that were stock came in the R32 GTR. They're very, very comfy and they have good bolstering, which means when you go around corners, you're not moving. Now, when you take a look at the seats in this car, now this is a black edition. It came with the Recaro seats. They're also very comfortable. I managed to drive all the way from Seattle, Washington to Los Angeles in these seats, and I never had an issue. They also have very high bolstering, as you can see. So when you do go around those corners, you don't move around. Now, of course, when you take a look at the premium edition, the seats are very similar in design. It's just that the bolstering isn't as high. And I don't have any personal experience with the premium, but I'm gonna make the assumption that they're also comfortable and they do hold you in place well enough. Now, everything I've said up till now would seem to suggest that, yes, the R35 GTR is a Skyline, except for one major thing. There already is a Skyline. For those of us in the States, we're not aware, but actually the Skyline is still on sale in Japan under the Skyline badge. And actually, we get those exact same cars here in the States. Go down to your local Infiniti dealership and take a look at either a G35 or a Q50, depending on what your model you're looking at, and realize you're looking at what in Japan is considered a Skyline. So how could the R35 GTR be a Skyline when Skylines are still being made? So to answer the question, is the R35 GTR a Skyline? Well, despite all the evidence that I put forth to you earlier in the video, actually my answer is no. The R35 GTR is not a Skyline, but it is an extension of the Skyline spirit. When you take a look at the Skylines, the R32s to the R34s, the GTR was just a trim package. And granted, that trim package got you the bigger engine and the all-wheel drive and the all-wheel steering, but you could also get a Skyline GTT, which came with a smaller engine and only rear-wheel drive. The R35 GTR is just that. It's an R35 GTR. It's the only trim package you really have. Now, yes, there are various little additions of the car, like you can get the premium, which is pretty much where the GTR starts. You can get a black edition, which comes with Recaro seats and a carbon fiber spoiler, or you can get a track edition, which is basically a black edition, but with no rear seats. But in essence, 
every trim package of the R35 comes with the same engine, the same transmission, and the same suspension. So in that, it's not just a badge, it is a car. Just like when you take a look at the Supras. Now the Supras started off as the Celica Supra. And over time, the Supra branched off. So where you had Celicas and you had Supras as their own individual lines. And that's what's happened here. The GTR has branched off into its own platform that honors the spirit and history of the Skyline. Now, all that aside, I would like to pose one more question to you. And that is, is the R35 Godzilla? Now there's a big argument in the Skyline community that really the only car that's earned the title of Godzilla is the R32 GTR. And that's because it won 28 of 28 races in the Australian race circuit. However, the R35 GTR was built with a purpose. And that purpose was to knock the Porsche 911 Turbo off its throne on the Nuremberg ring. And it succeeded. For two years, the R35 GTR set the tra track record at the Nuremberg Ring. So in that, I would argue that the R35 has earned the title Godzilla. And there we go. I hope that answers the question for you whether or not the R35 GTR is actually a Skyline. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button to let me know. It does help the channel out a lot. If you want to see more GTR content in the future, go and subscribe to my channel. You can now follow me on all forms of social media, which include Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And I'll leave links to those in the description down below. If you would like to support the channel, I have now opened up the JD Archer shop. If you'd like to get a t-shirt like the one I'm wearing or a few other designs I have, go to jdarcher.bigcartel.com and see if there's anything there you like. We have t-shirts, we have hats, we have hoodies, and we have beanies. And there's more designs on the way. I have also become an Amazon affiliate. If you go back to any of my other videos where I show you how to work on a car like the air conditioning on the Supra or doing oil changes, spark plugs on the GTR or the Supra and go to the description, I now have a list of every tool I used and part. That way if that's a job you need to do, you can make sure you have everything you need and if you don't, you can just click on the link and it'll take you right to what you need. If you have any questions or you have your own opinion as to whether or not the GTR is a Skyline, go ahead and post in the comment section down below. I thank you all for watching and until next time, forget everything else, focus on the finish line.